Cases of melanoma have been on the rise for a while now. In 1999, the number of new cases reported that year in the United States was just over 41,000. By 2019, it was over 88,000 cases. Similarly, in 1999, the age-adjusted incidence rate was 15 in 100,000 people. And by 2019, it was almost 23 in 100,000 people, an increase of over 50%. Based on these numbers, it's no wonder why we're constantly being told by public health organizations and our doctors to wear sunscreen. But melanoma doesn't affect everybody equally. The color of your skin makes a big difference. When we look at melanoma incidence rates across racial and ethnic groups, white people of European descent, like me, are overwhelmingly those at risk of melanoma. In contrast, people of color have melanoma risk and incidence rates that are several times lower, with black people being almost 30 times less likely than white people to get it. This is because of melanin, a family of chemicals in your skin that gives you your skin color. People with darker skin have more melanin in their skin than those with lighter skin. Melanin acts as a physical barrier to UV light, causing UV rays to scatter, preventing it from penetrating into the deeper skin tissues. Since UV radiation is the main risk factor for melanoma, having more melanin in your skin gives better protection against UV damage. And that's why we see such low incidence rates of melanoma in black people. But melanomas do happen in black people. They just tend to happen less often and on parts of the body that don't get as much sun, like the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. This is known as acryl melanoma, Scientists still aren't sure of the underlying causes for this type of melanoma, but from the little research that has been done specifically on black patient populations, there doesn't appear to be a connection between acryl melanoma and UV exposure. To be perfectly clear, UV radiation does affect black people. It can cause sunburns, DNA damage, wrinkling of the skin, and freckling. But the sun is about eight times less damaging to black people than white people and only one in 10 black people get a sunburn every year. So sunscreen does have benefits, but it probably isn't going to decrease melanoma for most black individuals. And this is where the problem lies. Public health organizations and healthcare providers are telling the same message to everyone, including black people and other people of color. That message is very specific. Wear sunscreen to prevent melanoma. Here's why that's problematic. For a lot of black people, sunscreen is just an unnecessary expense. Why spend money on something when sunburns are infrequent and the product doesn't protect them from melanoma? Second, public health messaging to black people is dishonest, again. Black communities already have much lower trust in the healthcare industry after centuries of mistreatment towards them. Yet, here we are, perpetuating these harmful patterns. To put this into perspective, recognize that we don't tell cis men to regularly check for breast cancer. So why are we telling black individuals to spend money in order to protect themselves from melanoma? The incidence rates for these two conditions in these populations is almost the same, yet our public health messaging is very different. Third, we're not communicating the important information that black individuals do need to know about melanoma. Namely, that they need to be looking for melanoma in locations that are not sun exposed. And as a result, black people may not know how to identify the melanoma that they're most likely to get, even if those prevalence rates are low. A while ago, the Figure One podcast did an episode on exactly this. In the episode, a patient went to a clinic with a six centimeter black plaque on his foot with a bleeding ulcer in the middle of it. The only reason that he had presented to our clinic was because his wife had become annoyed that he was bleeding on the floor when he was walking. The patient believed he had an explanation for what had happened. He states that he had pigmentation on the bottom of his foot since high school. He was a runner. He told her he'd been on the track team. Part of being on the track team, for some reason, the coaches 
had them put tar onto the bottoms of their feet, which I assume was to make the feet tougher or something of that nature. But he was convinced that he had some tar on the bottom of his feet that had been somehow trapped in the skin and just never could be washed out. When Philip told the patient, he was shocked. He didn't know it was possible for a black person to get melanoma. Just in total disbelief, it was as if they hadn't heard of it before. They hadn't heard of anyone else in their family having melanoma or skin cancer. They weren't aware that somebody with African-American skin could get melanoma. This case is a great example of how the one-size-fits-all communication strategy around melanoma is leading Black people to being underinformed about their health. And this lack of awareness about melanoma and the well-known barriers to healthcare resources Black communities regularly face are almost certainly the reason why Black people often are diagnosed with later-stage melanoma compared to white people, not because Black people are not wearing sunscreen. The fourth reason why our current messaging around melanoma to Black people is problematic has to do with the safety of sunscreen. In recent years, researchers have discovered that the chemicals found in chemical-based sunscreen are being absorbed into people's bodies more than we previously thought. In 2019, in response to these findings, the FDA decided that chemical sunscreens haven't been tested enough to determine whether they're actually safe. After failing to encourage sunscreen manufacturers to run their own safety studies, the FDA conducted two studies of their own. In both of these randomized clinical trials, the FDA found blood levels of the sunscreen chemicals exceeded the original safe threshold almost immediately. The takeaway here isn't that chemical sunscreen is not safe. We just don't know if it is safe. That then begs the question, why are we telling a portion of the population who don't need to wear sunscreen to wear it anyways, when we're not sure if it's safe? I would argue we shouldn't be. To summarize, public health organizations are telling Black people that they should wear sunscreen to prevent melanoma, even though there isn't evidence to support that message. As a result, Black people not only are being given information that's not useful to them, but they're also not being told about the information that they do need to know, that they can get melanoma, but it often looks different than in white people, and it appears in places that aren't typically exposed to the sun. Before we end this video, I think it's appropriate that we summarize how to identify melanoma in Black individuals. First, like we've mentioned a few times already, melanomas are most likely to appear in places that don't get much sun. This includes the palms of the hands, the soles of the feet, around the anus and genitals, the lower legs, under the nails, or in the mouth. Unlike white people who have to look for patches of their skin that look like freckles or moles, Black people need to compare the spot in question to their surrounding skin. Look for spots on the skin that are darker than the surrounding skin. The spots may have a different texture and can feel rough and dry to the touch. Also look to see if the spots are growing in size, bleeding, or seem to heal very slowly after injury. Any of these symptoms may indicate that the spot is melanoma. A great way to measure growth is to take a picture of the spot while measuring it with a ruler. Every month, refer back to the picture to see if that spot has grown. And if you're not sure if a spot might be melanoma, go see your healthcare provider.